So I just read Magnus the Red, Master of Prospero by Graham McNeil and it was pretty confusing. The book takes place on a planet called Morningstar. The planet is being torn asunder by geomagnetic storms and therefore the Iron Warriors and the Thousand Suns team up to evacuate the civilians. The book however also has a meta plot similar to the Lehman Buzz book, where the book is actually a flashback inside a bigger overarching story. For starters, I really like the dynamic between the Iron Warriors and the Thousand Suns, and this holds true for both the Primarchs and the members. Rather than the animosity we saw in the Lehman Rust book, we now got two legions that actually get along quite well. My favorite thing in the novel is probably the developing friendship between Forex of the Fourth and Araman of the Thousand Sons. Not only is it kind of cute to see the marines from two different legions get along for a change, their discussions tell us a lot about the Thousand Sons and the Iron Warriors, especially their differences really come to light here. Sadly, there's one thing that often ruined these scenes and that's the foreshadowing, or rather the shitty way it was handled here. For starters, we get multiple prophetic visions from the Thousand Sons that almost outright state what happens in the Horus Heresy books. But those aside, the more problematic ones were the <coughs> subtle ones. So we get Perturabo getting pissed and smashing something, and Magnus screwing up and turning people to dust, and more. The thing with foreshadowing is that less is often more. Especially in horror stories, this principle becomes obvious when a character is acting a little off, or if they know something they shouldn't, it creates tension. But when you just state what will happen in advance, the excitement or tension gets killed instead. So in this book, where the foreshadowing is so obvious and forced, it only really drags the story down. The other main problem I have with the book is the ridiculously rushed and complex story structure. Already in Lehman Ross we saw such a meta plot construction, and there as well the book was a bit too short to really pull it off. But this book takes it even further. In a book of novella length, we get like five smaller plots, a meta plot, and an overarching story with tons of plot twists. I have to say that some of the plot twists were actually quite cool, but the rest was so rushed that by the end of the book it just becomes a confusing mess. In the end, this is supposed to be a story about Magnus, and I think McNeil handled this very well. Sure, Magnus himself believes he is perfection incarnate, and the extreme foreshadowing don't really help to make this novel better either. But when you read between the lines, you get a much more clever image of Magnus the Red. See throughout the novel, the Thousand Sons, and especially Magnus, are extreme hypocrites. They criticize the Iron Warriors for just seeing lives as more numbers to add to the calculation, while at the same time Magnus is very much willing to sacrifice lives for his personal gain. Whether it's spending precious resources to search for artifacts that could have been used to save hundreds of lives, or prohibiting his sons from using their powers. Sure, when this is pointed out to Magnus he gets very upset, but in the end, because of his arrogance, he still refuses to change the way that he acts. Now before we get to the rating, I'd like to add that this book contains many characters from other novels by Graham McNeil, mainly Angel Exterminatus and A Thousand Sons. I've heard some say that this sucked, while many others praised the ties to those books. I have not yet read those books however, so I really can't comment on this. All in all, I'm gonna give this novel 4 to 5 Black Library stars, but only barely. I feel like the things this book does well get overshadowed by the rush plot and the heavy foreshadowing. But I'll give this book the benefit of the doubt, as I have not yet read the other McNeil books that connect to this story. For Thousand Sons and Iron Warrior fans, this is a great book, but for others there's definitely better options available. Then to the tier list. With 4 stars, this book ends up between Gilliman and Russ. It's definitely much better than Gilliman, but it's also definitely worse than Russ. In a way, it's funny how similar this book is to the Russ book, but then with an even more complex plot structure and foreshadowing as thick that even a blobfish would get it. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Bye!